Hi guys, this is Dan. Uh, it's 2 in the morning for me. Uh, this is the next day, but I need to go to bed yet. But I thought I should record. I wrote down some notes quickly, and I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on what I thought of the new update for Outlast Trials. I did already get to max level. The max level is level 65, so it doesn't take too long to get to the max level. Uh, I was not bored in three rounds, so that's a good start. But uh, before I get into my thoughts about the update, I want to say two things. First thing being, I don't know about other reviews reviews but if you want anything outlast related or anything review wise related to pretty much any game i've been uploading like hell divers killer clowns carnival hunt etc 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 any games i cover i'm always extremely honest with you guys and you know that and i care about your guys' opinions as well um so i just thought i should get that out the way because there's a lot of console shills right now and i don't mean all the console players just because you play on console doesn't mean you're a part of that group but if you are one of the console people going around on Red Barrel's YouTube videos and saying this is the best game of the year or this is game of the year, you're totally wrong. This is nowhere near game of the year um, and I'll explain why. Now, this isn't a negative video. This is actually one of my most positive videos for Red Barrels and Outlast Trials I, I gotta say, but um, the issue is, there's a few issues but see, hold on. Instead of beating around the bush, let's just get right into the review. And in the future, in another, in the next video, um, I'll cover the patch notes because I haven't even read those yet. I just played the game. Uh, so I'll cover in another video the patch notes. This is just a full review of Program 5 and the new update. So let's start with Program 5 and its map design. So let's talk about all the positives before the negatives. So I actually got quite a few positives. And also, about, I got a... I, it's okay so first of all this update is it's mediocre it's not good it's not bad but it's not it's it, all the other updates for the atlas trials including early access release like early access release was very mediocre and then from there it got just bad everything was pretty much bad all the updates were pretty garbage and just really bad because it was driving the player base away the halloween update was by far the worst update that has ever dropped in the history of horror gaming because it wasn't even scary and it was barely a Halloween update for literally a horror game. The Christmas update was okay, but it was still bad because the only good thing was the ice effect. But the fact that we were getting the MK challenges later instead of when the program released is what was extremely disappointing. So now let's talk about the latest update. Three months later, after December, after the Christmas update, we have program five, two MK challenges, and we got a new ending that I did find out about through people telling me and stuff. And I didn't care at some point I, because I was trying to get it, but I got bad RNG uh, on live stream and off stream. Uh, I did two reborns so far since the update and I both got the suicide bomb car mission. So eventually I'll get the ending, but I have heard about it. We this does contain spoilers so if you don't want spoilers then uh i wouldn't recommend watching this review but if you're okay with spoilers and just kind of talking about my thoughts then of course listen to the review um most of you guys also have probably played the update by now and have your own opinions about it but let's get into the map design so map design for new the program 5 was actually good the map design for program 5 was actually it's enjoyable to work around once i figured it out it was very easy to catch on and it wasn't tedious and boring like the last update halloween's update with program 4 was probably the worst program that's ever released in outlast or just in general the worst map i've ever seen from the outlast franchise i know i know people hate the outside parts of outlast 2 and I didn't like that either because I'd rather Outlast be an indoor type of areas like asylums or, of course, in Outlast Trials, test arenas. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to be out of a test environment in the Outlast uh, franchise because that is literally what drives the franchise in itself. Now, the map design was actually, like, really good. I actually like the map design. I love the whole conveyor belt system. I caught on right away. I solved the gameplay loop. It's um, challenging on the Ultra program, but at the same time beatable with two to uh, four people. Four people, they don't really make it harder for four people, so it's actually easier. Three people is like, you know, decently difficult, and two people is actually a lot more difficult. But the more people you have on Ultra difficulty, the easier it is. Um, and also the more enjoyable it is, because they added in bridge cooperation action the thing i've been asking for forever now they finally have in the bridge co-op action where instead of in the, all the other uh, programs where you just boost each other up a wall you actually can throw your teammate across the bridge and then when your teammate gets thrown across the bridge by yourself and makes it across the bridge he can then catch you so after you throw him 
he sticks out his end, then you jump and he can catch you. And it's just a really clean, it's just like, oh my God, it feels so good to catch your teammate and it feels so good to be thrown and then catch your teammate afterwards. It, we tested it, here's some gameplay on screen as I talk about it. But yeah, no, it's really good. Now, the reason I'm not showing my face cam is because I, I want you guys to see the, all the gameplay and stuff. But anyways, it, it's really nice. I like the, uh, tell me what you guys think about it. I am, I'm gonna get into the negative about it, but at the same time, this is the positive. So it's, I like how they added in. They did a beautiful job with it. Awesome red barrels. Program Ultra, I actually really like. I think it's the most challenging, cooperative and solo play. Um, uh, program now program omega in my opinion was still the hardest program to release to the allies trials because of the fact that you had to stick with your teammates at all times and it also you had um if i remember correctly it was like naked and afraid but like you had to stick with your teammates sort of thing i think i still think you had rigs i can't remember if you had rigs or not but yeah no program omega was very challenging and the the worst part about program omega was the fact that you had no reward and this was before halloween and during the stage during the time of program omega and halloween this was definitely the worst time frame for Outlast Trials. This game during that time was extremely boring and there is no poster rewards really yet. And so instead of making outfits, they decide to give us posters. Eventually, like, yes, I d did enjoy the posters for a decent amount of time, but to me, posters is just not a very important reward and there are better cosmetic rewards that are more enjoyable to get. And I feel like so far in program five, one of the biggest issues I noticed that it's just mostly room cosmetics instead of like wearable cosmetics. Now we did get some legendary outfits, but one of those outfits for early access um, Outlast Trials players is the Grizzly outfit, which was free. So you just get it granted to you. Then the other four outfits are from the DLC, which early Early access plays got 50% off. But at the same time, all five of these outfits are also console player outfits, which also they get granted at the start. So it doesn't really make it very unique. And yes, they do look good. Um, don't get me wrong. All the outfits have their own looks to them that are nice. And I wouldn't say one outfit isn't better than the other out of all the other out of all the legendary outfits the only one that i would say that's actually really terrible is the mosquito looking booger outfit from the halloween update that was probably one of the worst outfits that's ever dropped and i've never seen anybody wear it but out of that when it comes to the outfits during one of the worst updates it yeah it suits the thing um so for new amps we got new amps so that's a plus uh, the amps are really nice uh, i have no complaints about those i don't really want to get in depth about those in this video specifically because i'm going to cover those in the patch notes anyways but yeah the amps are nice no complaints uh new outfits or right, some people uh, there was a nerf to the quiet and uh, slippers and the quiet thing but it's not one of the worst nerfs ever it's not like the blind rig nerf where nobody uses the blind rig now and most people either use the healing rig or the stun rig uh, i don't know if they buff the blind rig yet so i still need to try the blind or mine rig whatever you want to call it i still need to try it and see if they actually fixed it I don't think they did, it's just my gut feeling, but I'll check it over before I make my patch notes video where I go over the patch notes. Um, yeah. Now, for, so we covered the new outfits. So Reborn 100 is now easier to grind. So I have two, I have a negative and positive about this. First of all, I do enjoy the fact that it is easier to grind because all you got to do is go to Program Genesis and farm Sabotage the Lockdown. And that's literally all you have to do to get Reborn tokens now. Now you need 20 tokens, not 10, but they're extremely easy to get. And if anything, this the Reborn grind has been reduced to a pulp and getting to Reborn 100 is easily obtainable. So you don't have to spend thousands of hours trying to get it now there is the negative side to it where pc players especially the players that have gone to reborn 500 or even 1000 or 700 um the problem is is those people that spent all that time doing that it's like their work kind of gets taken away from them so that would be the negative to that so in a sense i'm like yes that's good because when it comes to reborning i don't really care but the other issue with the whole reborn 100 thing is after you get to reborn 100 there's no other rewards for being reborn so there's no incentive to actually want to still get the reborn trophy uh, i will be getting it eventually because it is easier 
easier to grind now. I don't know if they're going to change this in the future because the programs, in my view, still seem extremely temporary where the devs are going to constantly mix and match these missions around. So there's no actual point to get A pluses because they're just going to wipe them again anyways. So getting an A plus is actually more of like just to like challenge yourself personally because the extra XP doesn't matter. For example, during my stream today, I could care less about A pluses and I'm already max level from 56 to 65. So it really didn't take long. A pluses are whatever. They're totally useless and more of a like, yes, I got an A plus. Um, so it's really, there's no purpose to them. And if they, if uh, Red Rails wants to give a purpose to A pluses and reborn 100, they need to have an incentive reward behind it where if they had a season pass, it would say you need to get all A pluses in this program to get this outfit. Or once you get to reborn 100, you unlock this outfit. So instead of trophies or just randomly doing A pluses for oh extra XP and currency, which obviously doesn't matter um, because you get just as much currency and XP anyways, the issue is then where's the incentive? So the problem with this update is st there's a lot of incentives missing still. And IGN covered this. And for example, I even played longer than and IGN this update so far they only played for eight hours I played for I think almost 11 hours again uh, on my day off which being Tuesday but I won't be able to stream anymore and I'll be editing videos going to work and working on our own game but from what I had time to cover I covered longer than IGN and obviously IGN was still baby level so I think they just played program Genesis but they even said themselves that the that the Atlas trials is mediocre and the replayability is there's really no replayability and there's no point in replaying the game to get those extra rewards and cosmetics when there's very few maps to select from. And they said, yes, it was fun, which it was, it's fun to play with people, but this is the reason, the, the, the problem behind all of this is there's not enough incentives, there's not enough replayability, and there's still not enough maps to make this worth playing. Now, if they release two programs with four MK challenges, like I was telling before, instead of just one map and two MK challenges. So if they also release program six with this and another two MK challenges, I'd be putting my rating up to a 7.5. But because of the fact that this is still very mediocre and it's not just myself, but a lot of reviewers are saying that there's not enough replayability and there's really no point in replaying this game. And in all actuality, a lot of reviews aren't gonna say it because they don't really understand the gaming industry too well is the fact that the only people that are going to stay around in the long run are speedrunners and the people with ungodly attention spans where they only play one game um which is okay those people support the game and stick around until more updates come i myself will support the game as much as i can through content but if they wait three months or even five months again i won't be able to keep covering the game as much as i have been recently because there really isn't any more content to cover and obviously as a youtuber and a reviewer i gotta keep covering other things and no, it's not just about the money because obviously I still work a normal job just like everybody else. Um, and I'm trying to make, you know, build up a company. It's it's about building my YouTube channel up so eventually I could make enough money from it. And also because it's boring, I was burnt out. Now there are some people that I got a few, very few haters and they are usually not too logical about their criticism towards me, which I wish they were, but they aren't. Um, but the most I've heard is that I, I should just stop playing the game because I give proper criticism or or they're trying to convince me that there's so much replayability where the funny thing is the speedrunners even agree with me and they have more hours than the people that don't agree with me so what's the problem there um, and the reason I'm pointing that out is because Red Barrels needs to listen to the right people. They can't keep listening to the shills. And it li sounds like, and from this update alone tells me they are starting to listen to the PC community more. Maybe even me. I don't know. They did add the bridge thing in and I would like was begging for it because I was like, Outlast, if you had more cooperation, this is going to save your game. But so we already talked about the positive of it. The negative about the bridge at cooperation action is the fact that it's optional. They should have forced players to have to use the cooperation method to beat certain parts of program five. 
Now, oh, what about single player? Well, if you're on single player, the program should be harder for you. So then it encourages you to get friends or try and join a community to join it with other people. That is how I would design the game. Now you could still play it single player and still go through the trial yourself because obviously, you know, sometimes even if you join it with people, you might want to solo. So how they could do that is just make it way more difficult to get through, um, but still possible to get through uh, in program five. Just make it maybe a maze at the bottom or just overall more difficult where it extremely encourages you to use the bridge action instead of having it as such a wide option. It's like not really a super worth a thing. Now you, it is worth it in the sense of like if you're in a certain situation, but speedrunners most likely are not going to use this bridge action and they're just going to go around and get the program program done instantly. Speedrunning programs though has come to an end with the fact that now you can just farm, sabotage the lockdown, and get all your reborn tokens that way in program Genesis. Now speaking of Genesis and program X, Red Barrels has totally um, destroyed the challenge within program X and Genesis is just like the living embodiment of a baby floating in the air. I don't, I don't know how you would describe it. It's just the living embodiment of what a baby is. Newborn newbie, doesn't know much, finally took its first breaths and started crying which is the the new generation of console players now red barrels designed this genesis program because obviously they don't think console players can take the challenge pc players had to take you know during early access now console players will probably never be able to experience the challenge that uh pc players did at early access release but you know at least they got program ultra which is quite challenging and is quite difficult but still not as hard as some other things that i've experienced so far in the trials that console players until released again or if red barrels fixes this or changes certain things or adds certain things back in like program omega and stuff they won't be able to experience that challenge if they are good at you know games in general and uh, do become better skilled on console during you know the last trials the other thing is i don't know how many console players there are it seems like there's a decent amount but i don't think there's like hundreds of thousands so one of my biggest uh, like pick my ass moments with this entire update is the fact that Rosie, the community manager said that there was going to be a roadmap and Q&A on Tuesday. Now, once this is released, I will be covering it. I was going to go over it in this video, but that's why I'm just doing a voiceover instead of my face cam because there is no roadmap or Q&A yet and say they didn't have the roadmap, they were at least 100% supposed to have the Q&A. She said she was going to release it on release day. I, I got that confirmed by multiple people and it's just nowhere to be seen. So everybody's like classic red barrels. So it kind of sucks. It's really not good for red barrels. It's not a good look knowing the fact and i don't know if it's specifically rosie's fault or something i'm just going by what she said as a community manager saying that she was editing it and it was going to be out by tuesday obviously if she was the only one editing it she didn't finish what she was supposed to be doing but um this just kind of goes to show how red barrels is a bit too laid back on their staff and they should reduce the gin drinking and focus more on what needs to be done like a real company should be and obviously you can run the, your company however you want to as long as you abide by the law Law, of course um but i think there's morals as well where being too laid back is not healthy for trying to build a community up because if you want to build a good image you have to appeal yourself to the pc players as well you can't just appeal yourself to console players console players aren't going to save you from everything and if you don't keep your most loyal followers around your your pc players especially the ones that have been here since early access then your community will fall apart very fast the other issue I still notice that's a thing and I've heard from multiple people now and even during my own playtesting with, uh, with, uh, you know, you guys, uh, and, you know, friends and stuff, well, you guys are all friends to me, um, my community that I formed, uh, that have, and, uh, Dead and All Alive that joined with me and then, uh, we had two new, two, uh, new dudes that joined, or actually three, we had a few people come by and a, a ton of people that stopped by and chat on stream. I appreciate all you guys stopping by. If I f forget any names, don't mention something, or if I said it weird, obviously, uh, because I'm getting tired here, uh, everything's positive and I, I love you guys. Um, you, thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, it means a lot to me, but um server rubber banding from what i've seen is still pretty bad it's it feels better than what it was a few days ago uh obviously they must have fixed something uh, since my last videos i was kind of talking about it they must have changed something but it's still an apparent issue where there is like doubling back and sometimes you'll go forwards and then of course like a rubber band you'll slingshot back that's what it is so 
if they could fix that or improve their servers so there's way less rubber branding that'd be nice it's not the biggest deal but sometimes it is annoying when you're getting chased after and then you jump through window then you get flown back and then of course like gooseberry will smack the shit out of you now i didn't shit on gooseberry but i mean she is actually like you know it, it, program 5 does suit her uh, but i've seen enough of her now and i i will say program 5 is my favorite program right now it's actually like probably the best program i've ever seen and when i think of the atlas trials i think of program 5 because during the early leaks of the atlas trials it, a lot of the gameplay was early concepts of Pro program 5 and Dead Not Alive did remind me of that when we were joined up and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. That's literally the early concepts of at the At Last Trials. And I think that's also where we saw the bridge, early concepts of the bridge jump. Now the bridge jump is like a baby version of the bigger bridge jump that we've seen where it was just a lot more incentivizing and looked a lot better and it didn't look much of an option. So if they can add in one of these programs or an MK challenge or something where the bridge jump is not an option or if it's option it's extremely difficult to get through the single part or the optional part where it's very incentivizing to use the bridge instead of just a uh, kind of like a yeah i'll do it because it looks cool sort of thing because obviously the bridge jump is not that useful and it's like kind of like whatever so it, the problem is is you can't <sighs> When map building and map designing, you can't just appeal yourself to single player players and bad players. Because if you do that, then the game eventually will get stale and boring for all the veteran players, especially the people that start to get better at the game or even form groups. You know, this is a multiplayer game, remember? If you do want to play a single player game, I would recommend going and playing Outlast 1 or 2 or Whistleblower because multiplayer games are meant to be played with people. And if it's not designed specifically to be played, played with people why are you even making a multiplayer game in the first place but that's kind of my final thoughts overall the update was very mediocre there was a lot of good points and there was a lot of bad points so i mean it's not the worst i think that's a fair review um i think this is a very fair review i feel like i've been very positive fair criticism um there's probably some negative points or good points i might have missed in my review uh but just from my memory at two almost three o'clock in the morning from gaming and streaming all day with you guys uh and i did record some gameplay for this video and that's what i did after because i did two well i did one whole stream but i had an issue with obs restarted the stream right away and then i went to go i get i got off to go eat dinner and then i got back on but instead of streaming again so i uh, instead i recorded because I wasn't streaming and recording um, because OBS is a bit finicky that way. So in the end, we just uh, did a recording after and uh, that's what you're seeing right now. But there are some pretty weird points where the NPCs are kind of dumb at times. That's another negative point. They could still be improved, but in Program Ultra, the NPCs actually feel like challenging enemies. They are very um, attentive and I did enjoy it. I thought it was actually quite challenging and I was like, yeah, good. This is pretty good. Pretty good job, Red Barrels. I like Program Ultra. As long as they keep it like it is, and if console players complain about Program Ultra, it, according to the devs, this is supposed to be insane mode. So if you've never played insane mode from Atlas 1 or 2, I would highly recommend going to play it and trying to beat it first try because you won't. And the people complaining about it are probably just overall bad at games. Um, I don't know what else to say at the moment. I need to... There's still a few... I am max level, but I still am missing a few cosmetics. I still need to see the final ending with my own eyes for myself. Uh, another good point they did add for more lore purposes is the certain vendors will say stuff now. The only person that won't is the app chick. She doesn't really say much and you can't really strike a conversation with her. You can also talk to Easterman on the radio, which was leaked for ages and I kind of thought that was going to happen. But I thought it was going to be more of a season pass thing where he gives you weeklies or dailies or something and challenges you got to do. Plus talking to you lore wise. But instead we just got the lore bit and we don't have a season pass yet. But my final thoughts before I end this review is Red Barrels needs to. One, if they actually want to grow a community and have consistent player accounts, they would need to update every month or every month and a half. 
a new program and two MK challenges with four new legendary cosmetics and a few other cosmetics. Or what they could do is run a season pass with 100 levels that will last two months where people grind this and by like a month and a half they finish it or maybe they finish it in a month, depends on how much they play. And then by the time the third month comes around, we get another season pass. So if they did stuff like this and every season pass a new program would drop as well, I feel like the Outlast Trials would actually start to exceed and do well over time. Now this is one of those games where I don't know how long they're going to support it. As long as they keep making revenue, they're probably going to release more programs. But are they just going to release program 6 and then, well I mean we got we need Whitehorn yet and we already know program 6 is Coil. So once they release program 7, are they just going to quit? We I, I don't know. I hope they don't just go into Outlast 3 right away and ditch the game because this game has a lot of potential. I just feel like Red Barrels needs to put more effort in and have a, a they need more of a team effort because one map designer is ridiculous. We've already talked about how their company is, you know, how they're working. And if they only have one map designer, and if that is true, from what I've heard from from um, several people, and of course, Rosie also mentioning it, that in my opinion is 100% ridiculous when seven QA testers is not needed. Teach the QA testers how to map design and also have them QA test the game. It's not that difficult to figure out. QA testers should not just be playing your game and writing notes on the game because clearly they still need to get better at what their job is because obviously Program Genesis is too easy and Program X is also too easy now. It's not even Program X anymore. It's Program B X Baby. It's... The only one that's actually fun and challenging to play is Program Ultra, but when it comes to farming reborns, like I said, just go on Genesis and do Sabotage the Lockdown and put some music on in your free time or something. It's, yeah, it's, it's like a walk in the park. Um... So yeah, we're going to cover the patch notes and whenever Rosie decides to release the Q&A, we'll, we'll look over that too and read some of the questions. Hopefully there's no dumb questions. Uh, we'll see. Uh, because in my opinion, there are dumb questions and then there's also dumb answers. So we'll see what that's about. And then of course, the biggest thing being the roadmap. I've been doing custom roadmaps for over the past year and few weeks, or I mean a few, um, few months. And I haven't updated it since because, you know, I already predicted the last bit and now we're at the end of the roadmap map where we still are missing the quack and clown but hopefully that comes in later and we're, we're i guess we're gonna see where program six takes us so i mean yeah a very mediocre update i'll give it a, i'm going to boost my rating from a four out of ten to a 6.5 out of 10 my brother rated it 5.5 out of 10 uh some people that joined up with me um rated it 7 to 8 out of 10 or 6 to 7 out of 10 i'm gonna give it a 6.5 out of 10 because it's very mediocre and i feel like it could be a lot better so uh good but eventually this will also get boring and just like ign said it doesn't have enough replayability i'll see you guys in the next one uh patch notes and such we'll be covering so the next few videos will also be outlast orientated because i actually have content to cover on it and hell divers content we'll put to the side for now and we'll just upload some some outlast content so yeah hope you guys enjoyed uh subscribe hit the bell button and um i appreciate all the people stopping by my streams and supporting me further see you guys catch you later Well, it seems like this video has come to an end, and if you want to support Dan further, make sure to hit that join button, subscribe, like and smack that bell button.